What's up, enthusiasts? When I was in Ohio for FoamCon and End War, one of the things I was looking forward to the absolute most was getting on the field and playing some Ion Rush. Ion Rush is a 5 versus 5 competitive nerf format that is a best of 3 elimination or flag hanging format. So there is a flag in the middle of the field. Both teams start on opposite sides with mirrored cover. And you can either end the round by eliminating the players on the opposing side or grabbing the flag and bringing it to the opposing spawn point. Uh, this footage is from, like I said, the Ohio FoamCon event where they were uh, running some games while they figured out the rest of the rules and before they officially launched the format, which will be available on the BTA website, by the way. And since this was at FoamCon next to the End War event where the FPS cap was 130, instead of the standard 250 FPS cap for this game type, they decided to bring it down to 130 because most people only had a blaster that was capable of that with them. So things are a little bit different than you would see in a normal Ion Rush game. This format was developed by the Atomic Dart League and they've been testing and refining over the last several months. Now on its surface, it may seem very similar to Quick Flag and while there are some likenesses and similarities, there are some few key differences here and there. Namely, the amount of cover, the spacing of it, and that key difference of not needing to bring the flag in to end the round, that you can just eliminate the opposing team, which was something that was instituted after this FoamCon event. I won't go into all of the details, the differences, and little uh, things. The rules, like I said, will be up on the BTA website in the near future, so you can check those out. But let's get into my gameplay. When I showed up, I was pulled onto a team with some SENC members, so we lined up, and it's always interesting to play with new people that you have not played with before. At the start of the round, I decided to try and push my way to that middle piece of cover on the far right, sliding on in to get under some darts, but not quite getting there early enough to get the tag on the opposing team player uh, before he was able to trade out with me. So that was something that we kind of adjusted for the next round. Now you'll see here that the team I was on is making a pretty uh, quick end of the round, cleaning things up, grabbing the flag, and taking that in. Now like I said, the flag now does not need to be hung when the opposing team is eliminated, but this was still while they were testing. Moving into the second round, I decided to take a bit of a slower approach, hanging behind Aiden here, behind this back piece of cover on the right, taking some shots, drawing some fire, trying to just get a good layout of the field, what's going on, where the shots are being taken from, and where everyone is looking and hidden. We do get an early tag out. I'm hanging further back, giving me more time to dodge these darts, and I've pulled a fair amount of attention from the rest of this team, so I decided to go with it and try to pull as many darts out from players as I can. Because if we do go into a third round, them having lo less darts than we do is a huge benefit. Now at this point I make actually a pretty big error and assuming there's only one player left in the opposing team, and while we do get him out thanks to uh, our blowgun player in the back there, I did not pay close enough attention and assumed that our team had cleared this side out and just let that slip, which was a huge mistake that resulted in a one versus one here. One now with a minute left, I have plenty of time and I don't need to rush this. Uh, this whole encounter though, was something that really made me feel like my shots are not quite right. They're not on target. I, I had his backside exposed for quite a while. Go for a quick reload here, and that prompts him to run in and try to get the tag, but I'm able to reload just quick enough to get the shots off as he uh, gets into sight. That reload was a little bit slower than I would have liked. Still need to refine that a bit more. But thankfully, I was able to salvage that round. It would have been terrible had my missed calls and mistakes led to the end of that round and our loss, but that does it for match number one. We ended up winning 2-0. Let's jump on into match number two. Now there is no drone footage for this match, so it is all going to be first person, but at least you get to stick on the entire time and see what essentially I was seeing. So again, instead of rushing to that middle point, I decide to hang a little bit further back and play a little bit safer for now since this is 
my uh, one of my first games in this format to get a better better lay of the land and how things play. Uh, again, there's those shots. Just I'm yanking on that trigger hard, and it is not responding well when I do that to the blaster. Uh, when I take my time and I'm a little bit more precise, you'll see shots land much, much better and go more where I'm aiming. So it's something I'm working on and uh, trying to just refine and get things dialed in for when I play in these games. Realize here that there's a pretty large gap underneath that cover, which this cover was impromptu cover Okay. that they put together to host this field as the stuff that they had, I believe they had issues with. So props right? to them for getting this done. See, like I said, Head. able to hit these heads, these little bits poking out when I actually take the time to line things up and not yank on that trigger. You have a nice, easy trigger pull that doesn't torque the blaster. When I see that this side is exposed and they went, they, they ran back to that cover, I'm able to move up, realize that they are not looking my way, and just continue up the side of the field and take the remaining two out, allowing us to uh, cleanly secure the end of the round and the point. The start of this round, I do try to get into this cover a little bit quicker to try and get a couple shots off on this person before he makes it to middle, Shoulder. extending that middle lead, giving down. us a little bit more Two breathing left. room. One this left. is left awesome be because left. when you have a numbers lead, the other team is forced Number to make left. moves. Middle they have left. the impetus on them because you have more blasters on the field that can easily, more easily uh, take advantage of players when they expose themselves back, moving man. from cover to cover. Now, they've loaded up the left side of the field more so than the right side, uh, meaning they are more exposed to my right side players, and that is something that I can use to uh, let my team apply the pressure to them while I try to find a good shot. Back middle speaking out. Also, constantly relaying what's seen, no what side. people it's are short. doing. That way, we Not can that. more accurately have a good idea and understanding of what's going on in the field, which is always important in any competitive scenario. I'm gonna say that pretty much any time this happens, or anytime I play one of these games. Now the start that tags me out, I believe actually hit the PVC cover next to me, but I'm not a fan of contesting calls, especially in friendly matches like this one. I'd much rather just take the hit, believe that they were right and move on. Uh, but our team actually ends up able to clean off the rest of the field, move on, grab the flag, cap it for the match win 2-0 again. Again, I was playing with the SCNC players that have been testing this game format, so they do have a little bit of a leg up, and uh, I don't believe my performance was all that great in these games, but I am looking very much forward to getting to play in a full-on format of Ion Rush, uh, rather than just the 130 FPS version that we played here at FoamCon. So let me know what you thought of this game type, these uh, uh, overhead views that were supplied by the Redfields, I believe. Thank you to them for recording these games. Absolutely awesome to have drone footage as always. And thank you to uh, Atomic Dart League for hosting this, developing this, and sharing it with everyone. It is a very fun game type that I'm looking forward to seeing uh, played all over the place. So that said... If you're new to the channel, you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that subscribe button for more in the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.